Welcome and thank you for attending the special dedication of the Metro Post Office as the Senator Thelma Harper Post Office. I want to welcome the many postal employees and executive leaders and take a moment to recognize some of today's distinguished guests. First of all, the Honorable Mark Green, 7th Congressional District. The, the Honorable Charlene Oliver, 19th Senatorial District. The Honorable Jim Cooper, former 5th Congressional District. <laughs> Mayor John Cooper. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Brenda Haywood. <laughs> and Mrs. Linda Harper and family. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the presentation of colors by Maplewood High School. Then please remain standing for the Star Spangled Banner by Maria Christina Brewer, board member of Senator Thelma Harper Foundation.
our thanks to the Maplewood High School Color Guard and to Ms. Brewer. Thank you. Today's first speaker is Mr. Omar Coleman, a District Manager of Tennessee for the United States Postal Service. He is responsible for overseeing retail and delivery operations in over 646 post offices, stations, and branches in Tennessee with a workforce of over 20,000 employees. Mr. Coleman has 24 years of postal service and a wealth of experience. Uh, please come up, Mr. Coleman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. Thank you, Lisa, for that kind introduction. Today, today we gather here to honor and celebrate the remarkable legacy of Senator Thelma Harper as we dedicate the Metro Post Office in her name. This is a momentous occasion as we pay tribute to a woman who has dedicated her life to public service and made a profound impact on our community. This honor is reserved for very few individuals. To put it in perspective, the Postal Service has over 33,000 retail offices across the country. Of those, less than 1,000 are dedicated in honor of an individual. Yes. Here in Tennessee, out of 646 post offices, only 11 have ever been dedicated. They were Derek, de yes, clap it up. They were dedicated to a World War II paratrooper, two judges, state senators, House of Representatives, and former postal employees. As I prepare for today's ceremony, I learned more about the impact Senator Harper had on so many lives. She was revered and loved. Those who knew her called her authentic, spirited, and treasure. She spoke with passion, like so many do. The difference was she acted on the causes she was passionate about. Her perseverance and legacies are what brought us here today. As we unveil this plaque bearing her name, may it serve as a constant reminder of the incredible contribution Senator Harper has made to our community. As it may inspire us to carry her legacy forward, ensuring that her vision for a better Tennessee becomes a reality. And now, it is with great pleasure that I introduce the Honorable Representative of the 7th District of Tennessee, Congressman Mark Green. Well, it is an honor for me to be here, and I want to thank each of you for coming out today. I especially want to thank Jim Cooper for the legislation that made this happen. And uh, Jim, thanks for putting it together. They told me I only have five minutes, so uh, for a politician, that's kind of tough, but we'll, I'm going to keep on the script, okay? It, it is great to celebrate together the incredible legacy of our beloved state senator, Thelma Harper. The Metro Post Office's renaming cements Senator Harper's trailblazing legacy in Nashville for generations to come. Tennesseans from Nashville and beyond continue to feel the impact of her work because her legacy is one that will shape the future of our state for years to come. As the longest serving female and the first African American woman elected to the Tennessee State Senate, Sen yeah. <laughs> Senator Harper was not, a, not afraid and not a stranger to hard work and determination that it took to get the success she wanted. While in the state Senate, Senator Harper focused a lot of her work on helping women and 
the children and the elderly. She was enthusiastic about developing youth programs and she worked with after school programs, organization science camps, mentorship programs, sporting events for children. And everybody knows about uh, the special Easter egg hunt, Kids Are Special Too, that she founded, which is still going on today. I had the unbelievable privilege to serve alongside Senator Harper in the Tennessee State Senate. Well, I was there for just six years, but she sat right behind me, and I will never forget her, nor those beautiful hats. Um, she had a profound impact, not only on our state, but on the individuals in the state Senate. She was a gentle soul, and, but she had an incredible inner strength. And, and it was her sharp wit, her kind heart, her gracious attitude that filled our capital with a much needed boost. Where she agreed with you, she told you. <laughs> And when she disagreed with you, she told you, but she never stooped to belittling or to hurtful stuff or name calling. With, with her, it was always straight to your face, what she thought, and I loved that about Thelma Harper. She always listened, and her, her rhetoric was constructive, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, embodying a spirit of what politics probably should be, but a lot of the times it isn't. In fact, it was her spirit and commitment of bipartisanship that served as an inspiration to me for founding a club in D.C. called the Reagan O'Neill Club. Uh, soon after I got to Washington, I founded this bipartisan club, and the hope was to have both sides of the aisle come together and learn each other's story and perhaps heal some of the division in our nation. And now we have 25 Republicans, 25 Democrats, they come and more are coming at each meeting. But her bipartisanship, her spirit of working together was the inspiration of what that club has become in Washington, D.C. She's having an impact today in our nation's capital. I'll never forget working alongside Thelma in the uh, state and local government committee. I don't think I've ever seen anyone who devoted herself to her committee more than Thelma. Uh, you know, seeing the heart, the passion that she poured into her work, inspiring. I was especially proud that she supported uh, one of my bills uh, to end the hall tax. Thelma actually went out and lobbied her side of the aisle to support that bill, and I was honored by that. But that's the kind of bipartisanship we're talking about. And she and I actually co-sponsored a number of bills together in my brief six years in the Tennessee State Senate. I want to say something for her beautiful family that is here. And Linda, it's, it's great to see you again. Uh, uh, you are your mother's daughter, by the way. Um, and, you know, when a family allows someone to serve, you're paying a price too, especially in politics or the military or, you know, you're paying a price too. And I just want to thank the entire family. And I know I met one gentleman who drove all the way from, from Georgia to be here, who's, who's in the family and others have come from, from all over to be a part of this celebration. But thank you for your sacrifice, Linda, uh, and your service to our state in that regard. Now, I, I hate that I only have five minutes, but I, I'm going to stay on schedule, and now I'm going to turn it over to our next speaker. And it is my honor to introduce State Senator Charlene Oliver, uh, who represents our beloved Senator Harper's former district. And i got a little more to say, so just take your time. She, too, works tirelessly for the incredible people of the 19th District, and I know she's made the Nashville community proud by carrying the trailblazing legacy of Senator Thelma Harper. Please welcome Senator Oliver. All right. Good morning. I wouldn't expect a standing room only. I wouldn't expect anything less uh, from this occasion. To uh, Linda and the family and friends, supporters of the late uh, Senator Harper, to distinguished guests, 
and members of the planning committee for today's ceremony. It is my distinct honor to bring greetings at this momentous occasion in Nashville and in the entire state of Tennessee. First and foremost, I want to extend a heartfelt thanks to the United States Postal Service and to Congressman Jim Cooper for diligently working to make today a reality. Thank you. <clears throat> Senator Harper's impact and legacy across Tennessee and this nation was and still is just as large as the hats that she wore. So when I thought about what's the best way for me personally to pay my respects and channel my inner Harper today, well, it was none other than wearing red as an ode to her sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, and by donning a hat from her personal collection. In the 96th through the 108 General Assemblies from 1989 to 2018, she was the first, and it's worth repeating, the first African American woman elected to the Tennessee State Senate and was its longest serving female senator when she retired in 2018. She, yes. <laughs> she also was the first chair of the Tennessee Black Caucus. Back in the glory days when the Democrats held a majority in the legislature in the early 2000s, <laughs> Senator Thelma Harper was the first black woman to chair the powerful Senate Government Operations Committee, a committee that I now serve on today. Her tenure in office would be described as transformative, according to the New York Times. When I was preparing my remarks last night uh, for today, I began to ask myself, what similarities can I draw on from the United States Postal Service that would remind me of the qualities and leadership traits that Senator Harper exemplified? So I came up with three. Number one, in the same way that the post office is universal and you can, find, you can always find a post office, no matter what zip code you're in, Senator Harper was deeply trusted and humbly served all people with excellence. Senator Harper's legacy and leadership embodied the values of fairness, equality, empathy, longevity, historical preservation, black excellence, and civil rights. She was a true champion for the people and a fierce advocate for women, seniors, and children. Second, much like the post office, she was reliable and dependable. She showed up and she showed out for her constituents. <laughs> Senator Harper was a heroine who shattered glass ceilings and a fearless warrior for justice who wasn't afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with dump trucks to successfully close a Bordeaux landfill. <laughs> And when Northwest YMCA was threatened to be sold to the city, she showed up to a tense community meeting and sat down on the front row. And finally, just like the post office does with our mail parcels, Senator Harper delivered. Yes. And she delivered our legislation. So I have my team pull up a few uh, legislation that she actually passed. I want to share some of those with you. In 1997, she was able to get a historical marker at the, Her at the Harold D. West building on the campus of Mary College, Mary Medical College, to recognize and commemorate the cultural and historical significance of Dr. Harold D. West, the first African American president of Mary Medical College. In 1998, she sponsored the bill to establish the Tennessee Economic Council on Women in 1998, yes. It, I only got five minutes, y'all. In 2000, she passed a law concerning state uh, highway funds to enact the Tennessee Minority and Women Business Enterprise Act with the purpose of ensuring that the Department of Transportation and construction contractors and subcontractors provide equal employment opportunity to minorities and female businesses in non-federally funded contracts. In 2007, she successfully pushed for the renaming of Metro Center, Metro Center Boulevard to name it after the beloved civil rights giant Rosa L. Parks. So how befitting that we enshrine Senator Harper's legacy on the very street that she worked to get renamed. In 2011, she named a portion of the Interstate 75 highway system within the state of Tennessee as the Tuskegee Airmen Memorial Trail. When she, asked, when she was asked why she was retiring, 
She told the Tennessean that it was time for the next generation of leaders to take over. So in 2018, when my nonprofit, the Equity Alliance, honored Senator Harper as a pioneer in politics at the inaugural Black Women's Empowerment Brunch, little did I know, as fate would have it, that I would ultimately become her successor. I am deeply honored to be on this stage to witness the unveiling of the Senator Harper Post Office. May we rejoice and submit her legacy from this day forward. So now it is my honor to introduce the next speaker, the former United States Congressman who served the 5th, 5th Congressional District for 20 years, our beloved, the Honorable Jim Cooper. Please come. Be careful, y'all. I'm out of office now, so there are no rules for me. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Senator Charlene Oliver, you're doing a great job filling <laughs> an incredible position that Thelma Harper held for so many years. There are not many people who can go by one name. There's a Beyonce and a few other folks, but there's Thelma, <laughs> and now there's Charlene. <laughs> to Linda Harper and the Harper family, to all the beautiful hats in the room. Uh, Thelma's legacy is everywhere. We should be proud of that, because she was a pioneer. She not only made a difference, she made things better. So we still got a lot of work to do. As hard as Thelma worked, she did not finish the job. I don't want to get into nitty gritty details, but I'm still disappointed that Nashville has been chopped up into three pieces by gerrymandering. That was the first time in the 200 plus year history of our state that they took the state capitol and chopped it into three parts. Now, the rules are the rules and they could do what they wanted to do, but I remember a day in the state senate when Thelma Harper was there and the Lieutenant Governor of Tennessee appointed Republican committee chairman, just to be fair, even though Republicans didn't have a prayer of being a committee chairman on their own. Now remind me, perhaps they're Democratic committee chairman today, but I haven't heard of them. So to me, the golden rule should be at play. Now I've never been a state official, but you know, treat others as you would like to be treated. We were told that now Nashville would have three congressmen. Well, in theory we do, but so far I've only seen one. And I want to give him full credit because Mark Green is here today. He showed up for work. He didn't have to do that. I haven't seen the other two. But Mark is actually opening up an office here in Nashville this Friday to, to be run by Chiquita, and that is progress. Now, uh, there are a lot of things I could, you know, question, but I still think, maybe I'm old fashioned, but Nashville should have its own congressman instead of one from Clarksville, Cookville, or Columbia. But, you know, those are fine communities but we all know that it was not an actually a natural division to chop our great state capital into three parts. And if the Republican legislature had stopped there, that would be okay, but in many ways, they've literally been trying to colonize the city of Nashville to take away our power. That is wrong, but I will not dwell on that. We are here today to honor one of the greatest public servants that our state has ever had, not just Nashville. I remember so many wonderful conversations with Helma when she'd tell me about pull type Tennessee and the Claybrooks family, and she's proud of Paul, and we all love Harper's Restaurant. But Thelma had a magic that we all need to work on trying to duplicate. You know, there used to be little plastic bracelets that people would wear that said, WWJD, what would Jesus do? 
Well, I wish we had little bracelets today that would say, WWTD, what would Thelma do? Because it's, it's not enough to pay lip service to Thelma. We need to vote like Thelma. We need to act like Thelma. Now, none of us can be Thelma, not even Linda, although she's pretty good. It's <laughs> but that is the way to honor Thelma Harper's legacy. So without further ado, let me have the honor of introducing the great, the fabulous Linda Harper, who knows better than anybody about her mama and how great she was to her family and to the whole state of Tennessee. Linda Harper. many people are going to be here. But let me begin by saying, um, you know, bear with me because even um, to this day, I still swim in rough waters being here without my mom because that was truly my heart. But I would first like to thank Cheryl Mays, the congressman team for even getting us here to this moment. I'd also like to thank Council Lady Sharon Hurt, Jasper Hendrick, because somewhere they had this idea that we could rename a post office in Mom's honor. Now, I know this may be shocking, but I really do know Congressman Mark Green. I remember him when he was in the Senate with Mom. And I'm gonna share this little story since Congressman Cooper went there. <laughs> you you rile me up. I will say that when I saw him today and people were like, well, who's gonna do it? And you know, we have a Republican in that seat. And we couldn't figure out which person was our representative. And they thought it was the other guy. And then somebody said, no, it's Congressman Mark Green. I said, yes, that's one I know. You know what I mean? So I said, at least I can honestly say that mom knew Congressman Mark Green and she had a relationship with Mark Green. And if we're gonna have a Republican in that seat, then I'm glad he's the first one and it's Congressman Mark Green. <laughs> So as I stand before you, I also want to thank the post office representatives and everyone that had anything to do with this special day. To my Metro family, Mayor John Cooper and the fabulous Deputy Mayor Haywood. Thank you for being here. As I think about today, I stand before you the proud daughter of both my parents, Paul and Thelma Harper. For you would have to understand and know their story in order to understand how we got here to this moment on this day, August 15th. Many of you may not know that my mother was 16 and my father was 18 when they got married. But little did my parents know, nor my grandparents know, that my mother would be thrown out of high school just for being married. When that rule changed, mama went back to high school. And you know, she's doing the most. Most people would just go get their degree, but no, mom goes and she runs, I think second place as Miss Cameron. And went on to graduate, had my older brother dialing. And then about 20 years or so, she went back to the Tennessee State University <laughs> with a friend of hers called Miss Joanne. Now I tell you that story because imagine 
how do I say this, two women of a particular age, both married with children, decided to go to college at Tennessee State University. But as fate would have it, my brother decided that he was going to the Tennessee State University, and his mother and Miss Joanne would be seniors, and my brother would be a freshman. <laughs> Think of that picture. <laughs> All I would tell you is that my brother would come home and say, oh no, Miss Joanne and Mama are all over the place living their best lives, Mama's who's who's of American college students, and they were calling them salt and pepper. <laughs> And then he would say, Linda, I am counting each and every day when mom and Miss Joanne graduate. <laughs> but I say that story because that other student was Miss Joanne North, who went on to become the first countywide council at large member. And she went on to be the first woman property assessor, Miss Joanne North. Of course, we were very proud as mother brought, broke many glass ceilings, but what I can tell you is she was a fearless woman and a fearless legislator that knew no boundaries. I always wonder why everyone didn't know the secret because the minute that you told mama no was the minute that's what she was going to do. <laughs> I can tell you that secret now because she knew no boundaries. She felt that in order to be successful, you had to have community development, economic development, and people development, and you needed all three to be successful. I will tell you that when I was in college in Atlanta, I did not know that it was not a senator's job to help someone pay their bill or get out of jail. So needless to say, I called my state senator and I said, hey, a friend of the church needs someone getting her son out of jail. And he said, Linda, everybody's not your mama. We're not doing that on that down here. <laughs> and by the way, have your mama call me so she can tell you what a senator really does. <laughs> but I will tell you, mom wasn't big on titles before what she thought about a senator, council person, was that passing a bill is great but she had constituents in her neighborhood that had trouble paying bills. So she had to dig a little deeper and find other avenues in order to make things work for her constituents. The beloved District 19 and the Council District 2. She passed early on free lunch and free school supplies because she knew a child could not learn if they were hungry before she too was hungry as a child. She was one of 11 and a sharecropper's daughter. If she was here today, she would be standing up here with the biggest smile, wearing the most fabulous hat, flopping from side to side. But what you didn't see in quiet moments is that regardless of the award or the accolade, I'll never forget she came home with this pet rock and it simply said, we love you, Senator Harper. And she came home and she said, Linda, Linda, can you believe it? All this for me? And I remember saying, yes, mama, all this for you. But I must admit, if she was here today, and she came and told me about a post office on Rosa Parks Boulevard. It's a little surreal. I would have had to say, Mom, it's something special about today. Make it make sense, as they say these days. But what I can say, she was many things to many people. Whether she was your friend, your Delta sister, your godmother, mother, your colleague, your auntie. But at the end of the day, guys, when it's all said and done, 
I am the blessed one because the title that I get to see is simply mom. God speed and thank you. Ms. Harper, if you could please stay on stage. And at this time, we want to welcome Nashville Mayor John Cooper and Deputy Mayor Brenda Haywood. It's a great day for Nashville. Yes. And congressmen, former congressmen, state senators and representatives and council members and President Glover and all of the distinguished guests who are here today to whom Senator Harper meant so much. And we here to celebrate an action by the federal government that we all approve of, a great thing. <laughs> the Thelma Harper Post Office on Rosa Parks. How appropriate and wonderful that is. And to Senator Harper's family, thank you. Thank you for sharing her with us. And to honor a trailblazer, a pioneer, the state's longest serving female senator and advocate. We're here, Brenda and I are here to read a, a proclamation that's gonna, she'll, she'll take a paragraph, I'll take a paragraph. We may not do all the paragraphs because she had such an incredible and important life for all of us here in Nashville. Well, first of all, I just consider it an honor and a pleasure to stand here today and I also want you to know that we have the distinct honor of working with Linda in the mayor's office, and that's just a phenomenal treat for all of us. Um, I just garnered so much wisdom from your mother, and just being able to be with you each day is just delightful. So, like the mayor says, we're start a proclamation recognizing Senator Thelma Harper Day. There, whereas Senate, Senator Thelma M. Harper was the first black woman elected to the Tennessee state and the longest serving woman senator in Tennessee history, Harper's signature statement of wearing hats has become symbolic of her advocacy and unwavering commitment to her community. The advancement of women's equality the advancement of seniors and children, and whereas... Well, well whereas, and we're gonna skip this paragraph, okay. <laughs> but let me just thank all the council people because before she was a great state senator, she was a great city council member. But then she went on to the Senate, and whereas in the Senate, she took on a range of causes from free school supplies and free lunch to students, from low-income houses to strengthening laws on elderly abuse by caretakers, legislation that renamed Metro Center Boulevard to Rosa Parks Boulevard, these are just a few of her accomplishments. And she championed and sponsored the establishment of the Tennessee Economic Council for Women and promoted women, children, and families, families relentlessly. And? and and I'll just drop down here because the accomplishments are so numerous. Whereas Harper's love for her community was front and center, she was often seen out in the community supporting her constituents. She and her husband, Paul Harper, thank you. Linda said they never said anything about my dad. <laughs> Paul and her husband of 60 years were the founders of the annual Senator Thelma Harper's Kids Are Special Too, East Egg Hunt, which has already been mentioned which has been held at the Metro Police Academy since its inception and celebrated its 38th year in 2023. And whereas... Whereas on this day, August 15th, the Metro Post Office on Rosa Parks Boulevard will be renamed in her honor. 
And this designation honors her legacy and her profound impact on Nashville and the entire state of Tennessee. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that I, John Cooper, the ninth mayor of Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, mm -hmm. and Brenda Haywood, <laughs> our first African-American deputy mayor in Tennessee and Nashville, we join Jim Shulman, Vice Mayor of the Metropolitan Government in Nashville and Davidson County, and all of the council members here today to recognize this post office and this day, August the 15th, as Senator Thelma Harper Day in Nashville and Davidson County, Tennessee. Thank you, Thank you. so much, so much. Stay on the stage, please. Okay. All right. At this time, I would like to invite Congressman, Congressman Mark Green to please come up on stage. So now we're going to have hours done like this too, also. <laughs> It's a, it's a federal taxpayer dollars, I guess. <laughs> so one of the things we can do for very special people in the United States Congress is to read their life story into the congressional record. And for as long as we're a country, Thelma's story will be forever told in the congressional record of the United States Congress. So. I don't have my reading glasses, so I'm not reading it, but um, Linda, this is for you and your you. lovely family wow. in memory of an amazing life. Thank you. Got it? Thanks, you. Okay, stay on the stage. Oh, please. Happy to. Okay. Linda. Please welcome. Uh, Patrick Daly, who will be singing Lift Every Voice. Good morning. I introduce you to my friend and colleague, Mr. Ezra Hagerbrooks, uh, incoming graduate student at Tennessee State University and uh, professor of uh, orchestra at Clark Atlanta University. Uh, this arrangement of Living Voices Sing was specifically crafted in honor of Senator uh, Harper, and so we, we pray that it is a blessing to you all. You may, so I also contextualize things a little bit further. You please, I invite you to stand and join along in singing the first verse of this song. I also know that many of us do not know the last two. So again, <laughs> so in that spirit, uh, you are free to sit and reflect on the text of the uh, last two verses of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Thank you. Rod, bitter the chestnut rod, 
yet with a steady beat Have not our weary feet Come to the place For which our fathers sighed We have come over a way That with tears has been watered We have come Treading the path through the blood of the slaughtered Out of the gloomy past Till now we stand at last Where the white gleam of our bright star is cast as we unveil the designation plaque.
that can't read it. This building is named in honor of Thelma Harper by an act of Congress, public law 117-277, December 27, 2022. I want to thank everyone for attending today's dedication. This concludes our ceremony here at the Luby Community Center. We will be walking over to the Metro Post Office to unveil the designation plaque on site. Thank you for being here. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.